friends welcome back to my channel or hi if you're new my name is Kent welcome so because you guys seem to really love the apartment content and I really love to make it I thought let's do another apartment video today but because you guys have seen pretty much all my apartment has to offer at this point you've seen a daytime tour and you've seen a nighttime tour I thought I would sit down and chat to you guys a little bit about some of the tips that I have learned in terms of optimizing the space in my apartment. So things that I have found during this long two year journey of furnishing this place from absolute scratch, things that I've learned that have really helped make the space look a lot bigger than it really is, and things that I've also found really work well in the space and complement it a lot. So if that sounds like a video you're interested, please stick around, please like if you enjoyed this video, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and let's get straight into it. So while I know that a lot of things are out of your control, one thing that is in your control is how you kind of kit out a space. So down to your furnishings, the colors you choose, where you place things, all of that plays a huge role. And I really learned that the hard way in the beginning, but I'm grateful for the you know tries and fails of everything because it really showed me how things work very well in the space. For example, when I first moved in, my couch, which is now against the wall, was blocking off the side here and facing the mountain because I liked the view, but you walked in and there was just like this obstruction. So I'd say tip number one is making sure your whole space is as open as possible. Try not to fill your studio apartment with too many things because it will just get out of control and you will just feel like you can't move. So placing things in areas smartly is a very good tip. Make sure that nothing's obstructing your walkways, nothing looks out of place. You're gonna struggle trying to differentiate between areas because it is all just one unit in one space. But there are ways to do that without placing furniture in between to make it a block off zone, which I'm going to get to a bit later. But let's first go into talking about how to make your space look a lot bigger than it is. Since this whole video is about space optimization and making the most out of the small space you have, I think the first thing to do is, well, the first thing to discuss is the illusion of making it look that much bigger. And that is mirrors. Placing mirrors on either side of your wall, so one on this side of the room, one on this side of the room, will immediately double your space by two. It doesn't even have to be a big mirror. I've got a small round one on the right and a medium length one on the left. And because they reflect the outside perfectly and the opposite ends of the room, it makes the space look triple the size. And that's another thing I've learned, putting them directly opposite each other so that when you look in one and the other, it's almost got that like illusion effect that the room goes on forever. Mirrors, 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 as many mirrors as you can have without it looking creepy. <laughs> Put mirrors in your space for sure. So if you look there, it immediately looks like the apartment goes on way longer than it actually does. You can see the reflection all the way to the other side. It almost has the illusion of being another set of windows next to the one that is already there. And it just carries on through until you get to the small round mirror on that end, which again has the illusion of being a fake window because it reflects the windows on the other side. When you look at it from the other side, same effect. And as you guys can see, that's not even a big mirror, but it really does just play with the space and make it look so much larger. Now let's get into how to have furniture in your space, but buy smart furniture and furniture that is going to work with your surrounds, blend in nicely without making it look clunky and cluttered. My tips for this, and I've learned again, the hard way, is round furniture. Round furniture, for some reason, first of all, it doesn't take up a lot of space because instead of being square and having those edges, you just take that away and you already have saved so much space. So having a round coffee table, having a round dining table, having a round stool, just having round things in your house will A, stop you from walking into it and bashing your knee against it or your toe, which we've all been there, and B, 
will just make the flow look really nice and really even and you will actually be surprised how much having round tables and items like that in your house makes it look so much bigger. I didn't realize until I started playing around with things and I was like, wow, I had a square coffee table in the beginning. I put it down. I was like, that makes the space look so odd. Put in a round one and it just really leveled everything out. And then while we're on that note, also having things that are glass or see-through. So they're functional, but they don't even look like they're really there. I mean, you know they're there. You're not gonna go walk into it and bash your knee, as I've been saying. But having, you know, a glass dining table like I have, having a glass bedside table, it just creates the illusion of you having way more space than you actually do because if you look at it, you see right through it. So it doesn't look like it's this obstruction in your way and this whole piece of the puzzle that is now needing to be moved around and considered in your space. When you walk into a house or a studio apartment, the first thing you tend to notice is the lack of space. And I don't want to toot my own horn here, but actually I will because I'm proud of it. A lot of the compliments I've gotten about my space is that it looks so much bigger than one would think. And I am very lucky because this is quite a large space, but in terms of studio apartments, it's pretty average sized and I did have to make do with what I could have and that being said you know you are in a small space you can't go and have a six seat dining table and this massive chest of drawers and you know six seats to you know relax and in the corner two couches it's just not going to happen that's not the space you're working with so be smart and for me I have a round glass dining table and two white chairs which are both very neutral light colors the glass is obviously see-through and it still serves the purpose I can have a friend over for dinner I can have my boyfriend over for dinner a family member and you still have a place to sit but it's not taking up a necessary space because how often are you really gonna use it you know even if you use it every night you want it to be something that you walk in and you don't have to again maneuver your way around or it's not an eyesore so here is the glass dining table that I have as you can see, it's obviously completely see-through, takes up absolutely no space. And over here is the round coffee table I have. Again, also just really maximizes the space. So here is my bedside table. Again, it blends completely into the background and it just saves so much space. And you can see it in as well, so it looks like it goes on for a lot longer than it does as opposed to that just being all wood and looking very clunky. So one thing we've all been victim to in a studio apartment is trying to figure out how to have specific areas within the same space. We don't often have the luxury of having you know, a separate lounge and a separate dining area and a separate kitchen and a separate bedroom as a lot of normal apartments or homes have. So we kind of have to make do with the space we have. And there are still many different ways that you can divide up different areas and very clever ways as well. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be with an actual divider or a fake door or a slide or a screen or anything like that. It can literally just come down to how you place things on the floor. So my apartment has got tiles all along the bottom, which I love, I'm very grateful for. But in order to warm up the space a little bit more and separate it from itself, I bought a massive rug and I put that underneath the couch to build up a lounge space. And it is the perfect size that it creates a perfect area that's designated for my lounge space. My coffee table's on there, fits underneath the couch, and it really goes into that area and creates a whole little cove that would otherwise not be there. Same goes for my dining room table. I've got a perfect little round mat underneath the dining room table that also then corners that whole area off as its own thing without, again, blending into the lounge, the kitchen, or my desk area, or anything else. So I don't have a mat underneath my desk, obviously. I don't need one. Having you know, a mat and a comfortable carpet or something along those lines also just warms up the space and gives it a really homely feel. And you, in your mind, know that that's your designated areas. And having that different texture, your brain also immediately makes that connection. I am quite lucky in the sense that, as I mentioned earlier, my, carp my apartment's got tiles from the kitchen into the lounge. And then when you walk into my bedroom, it is carpeted. And then in the bathroom, it's tiled again. So I have that natural division, again, with textures. And 
actually after seeing that it made me realize okay well if that's so easy to do and that looks so nice I can just do it myself I don't have to rip up the tiles and put in a carpet or anything but I can just buy a mat put it against the one side that's my lounge area buy a smaller mat put it underneath my dining room table that's my dining area and your brain will just immediately start to make those associations with those places without having to actually physically divide them then if we're talking about physically dividing spaces to you this may just look like a bookshelf but to me this is actually the wall to my bedroom so my bed is right behind there if you guys have watched any of my apartment tour videos which i would have linked above earlier you'll know that my room is right over this and this is actually a diy shelf that i put up to divide the two so it is a bookshelf but it also acts as a wall and i think using something like that is so clever i used to have a screen you could like fold out and fold in again and aside from the fact that it was extremely flimsy and i would knock it over constantly and it would crack the whole time and it was just an utter disaster basically this is much sturdier it's also something that is clever because you can use it as storage so that's another thing in apartments it's very hard whether you're in a studio or not to find an apartment with storage space Again, I'm very lucky in this one. I have lots of cupboards in the kitchen and I've got a lot of cupboards in my bedroom, but a lot of places don't have that. So it makes a lot of sense to have something like this where you can use it to store your books and store your items, store plants, store scrunchies, store technology, store whatever you want in here that then also acts as a wall. So you're killing two birds with one stone basically. In my bedroom, I also have extra clothes and extra shoes that I don't have space for, so I bought a very small very narrow shoe box that I put or like a shoe crate that I put all my shoes in and right next to it is my laundry basket which again if you look at them they look exactly the same they're the same size that was a coincidence but I'm very grateful for it you know getting things that are longer in length but thinner in width is also a great idea for saving space in your apartment because you're still utilizing the space you have but things aren't jutting out in your way they're just sleepy against the wall while we're on the topic of storage spaces and kind of buying furniture that will optimize your space as opposed to get in the way of it another thing i found is buying furniture that is not chunky so buying things that are very minimalist, light wood, you know, neutral hues, things that blend in to one another as opposed to dark wood and heavy old antiques. And again, it does all come down to taste and I'm sure you could make that stuff work. I've just found that it's, it's harder to do that. Whereas light woods and light colors and I guess kind of Scandi neutral aesthetic really works in a studio apartment space because it's very light and bright and open and you're not taking away from any of the available space that there is. Another thing to mention on that note is buying things like shelves or desks or bookshelves or tables or whatever that aren't solid but that have gaps in between. So whether they are trestle style or they're just layered or they don't have a big block and they've got thin legs, all of those things really help maximize space because the minute you start adding in chunky furniture and things that take up every little piece of room, you're immediately gonna start feeling like the walls are closing in on you. <laughs> so getting items that are very lightweight, that blend in really well, and that still show a lot of wall space and a lot of floor space and a lot of your surrounds while still acting in a functionality that is what they're there for, it's another really good tip. So when you look at everything as a whole, you can see that less is always more. That's another thing I've learned. and. Placing things into areas that work well together without being cluttered is it is an art and it is something that you learn through trial and error. But if you guys are moving into studio space or even if you're just moving into an apartment that's a little bit smaller, hopefully some of these tips can help you guys out. And yeah, if you look at buying certain things for your space, things that I would recommend you get are smaller than you need. Buy those things slowly and play around with the space instead of trying to kit everything out in like a month. This took me two years and I'm very happy with it but still took a lot of you know of tetris moving and trying to figure out how things are supposed to look using things like plants and natural colors and light hues and mirrors 
round tables, round furniture, lots of glass. You guys get the picture. All of those things just really open the space up. So let me know if you guys found this video useful and if you have any questions, I'm happy to also ask them below in the comments. Please like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe obviously if you're new and you want to join the family and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.